Hi! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'll show you my painting at home routine while I paint this portrait of Queen Elizabeth. When I filmed this video I didn't have an art studio and I used to paint all my paintings and film and edit my videos in my bedroom. So the first thing I used to do before painting was to cover my clothes with a painting smock and I prefer to have a smock with sleeves because otherwise I would get all my sleeves covered in paint. Just perfect. The second thing I do before painting is reorganizing the spaces a little bit. So as you can see I have a foldable desk and a foldable easel, all elements that I can fold up and put back when I need to recreate new space when I'm done painting. Saving space is fundamental when you do many things in the same room. And also foldable space can help you to organize the same space in different ways depending on the need of a certain moment. For example, if I need to paint smaller pieces, I can use this table easel and just work sitting in front of my desk. Whereas if I need to work on bigger pieces, I can always use my bigger easel to support the canvas and the space on the desk to support the materials. Or I can fold the top board of my desk to have more space in front of me. For today, I'm going to work with the bigger easel and just put the small one on a side. So now that I've set up my space, the third thing to do is prepare my materials. So brushes, painting palette, safflower oil, more brushes because you'd never have too many. My beloved colors that allow me to paint and pursue my passion. Okay, now stop it. And a rag or two maybe to clean off your brushes from the paint. And then I want to create some atmosphere by adding some music, the right playlist to get in the perfect painting mood. To me, it's very important to set up my space with everything I need before starting to paint so that I don't have to stand up and look for something I forgot while painting, but I can focus on the work and just paint. If you're wondering why I've chosen Queen Elizabeth II as a subject for this painting, this is a commissioned work that I did for a collector last year. If you're interested in commissioning a painting or a portrait, please write me an email to the address below. So today's video is going to be a survival guide for home painters who don't own an art studio or a room dedicated only to their art. Today I'll talk to you about what are my best tips for painting at home safely and easily. Before the video starts, I invite you to leave me a like to support my newborn channel and to subscribe to my channel if you want to see new videos every week about drawing and painting. So once I've set up my studio space in my bedroom, I estimate to work for 3 to 4 hours per day so that I optimize the time that I spend setting up the space before painting and then tidying it up after the painting session. I think that the more time you spend preparing your space, the more you want to spend painting. Because once you start, it's hard to stop and also you want to keep painting until you're happy with the result and if you're painting with oils, you're happy with how your layer is going to dry. This is why it's preferable to paint for several hours when you're working with oils, because if with graphite and drawing you can always go over a layer that you've left unfinished, when the oil paint dries you can only paint over it and sometimes you may have to cover some areas that you're not very happy with. So when you're painting with oils you really need to think strategically of the layers about how they're going to um, interact with each other. So it's very important that a layer that dries is going to help the layer you're going to put over it and not affect it in a negative way, slowing your working process. So this method works for longer sessions, but if you prefer to paint and draw every day, maybe for a smaller amount of time, I suggest to find a space, maybe smaller, but that you don't have to set up and then tidy up every time, but a space that's always there and ready to be used when you need it. So now let's talk about how to find 
a place like this in your home, how to set it up and why it is so necessary to have a space only for your art. As Virginia Woolf said, a room for one's own, maybe not a whole room, that's the point of today's video, but maybe a corner of a room. Not everyone is so lucky to have an extra room in their home that they can use to paint or to pursue their passions and for me that has been a case for my whole life up until six months ago when I moved out of my parents' home and started to live in my own place. I must admit that it has been pretty uncomfortable most of the times to work in an arranged space in my bedroom with little space not organized in the best way even if it was the best way possible and also with the presence of my parents or my family that sometimes with the best intentions wanted to see what I was working at. But hey, I survived. I kept painting even though it was a little uncomfortable sometimes. And now I'm gonna tell you how. So to find a perfect space to set up for your art, you need a little bit of ingenuity. So in 2020, I did have an art studio outside of my home, but in March 2020, my whole country was set on a lockdown. So I was forced to stay at home and work in my bedroom. So I tried to figure out where to cut out a space for my art and I started moving my furniture and turning my room upside down to find a new disposition for the spaces that could allow me to cut out a little space um, for my art and that's the space that you saw at the beginning of this video. That space didn't exist before. There was my bed in there turned in another direction and many stuff I decluttered. And decluttering is an excellent way to find new space because stuff that you don't use anymore or that you barely use takes space you could give to stuff you actually use but don't have the space where to put it or for a new desk for your passion. What I'm talking to you about is optimization of the spaces you already have. Another way to optimize your spaces is to have foldable furniture like the foldable desk or the foldable easel I showed you at the beginning of this video. Foldable furniture allows you to quickly rearrange the space and to switch the mood of the space you create. For example, when you work and sleep, or relax in the same room, it's important that uh, there are separate areas for relaxation and for work and it's also important that when you're relaxed you don't see the desk where you work because in that way when you're relaxing you think about the work and it feels like you're sleeping in your office and <laughs> that's the worst thing you want to do. Being able to fold my desk once I'm finished painting or working with my laptop allows me to switch the mood of the space and to immediately get into a more relaxed mood. Another thing that's very important for me is natural light. That's why you want to put your painting easel or drawing table next to a window so that the natural light always shines the best on your work and shows you the real colors, the real values that artificial light might deceive. And if you draw and paint with your right hand, you want the light to come from your left and vice versa. In that way, you don't have your hand's shadow on your work when you're painting or drawing. Another thing that your home art studio should have is a door to be closed behind your back. You need a space where to concentrate, preferably a space when you can be alone with your work. You don't want the distraction of another person next to you that might talk to you, call you or distract you in any way, because when you're painting or drawing you need to be focused and you need to enter another world, another dimension where only you and your artwork exist. So if you don't have a room like this or you share a room with another relative or another person, you might want to set boundaries, maybe time boundaries, where you can have that room for yourself only for a specific amount of time. So other than the actual space, the good lighting and concentration, an art studio at home requires at least other three elements. The first one is tidiness. 
I'm not the tidiest person and it doesn't come natural to me to have a neat and clean space at all times but I know how important it is for my art studio to be neat in order to facilitate my inspiration and my workflow. Brushes and palettes need to be cleaned after every painting session and your supplies have to be put away at their right place every time you finish your work. I always dreamt that an art studio is a place where you can leave your materials everywhere after you finish painting and that you can be free to express yourself without the worry of tidying up everything, but that's not the case. I've had art studios before, I do have one now, luckily, and being tidy is key for my concentration to be always at their best and also to start as soon as I can when I want to paint. Because the news is, if you don't tidy up after you finish your work, you'll have to do it when you want to start a new painting session, losing precious time when you're inspired to make art. At the end of this video, I'll show you my cleaning up and tidying up routine that I do after every painting session. Another important thing to consider when you live with others, that can be your family, your partner or your flatmates, is that the fact that they could see your work even when it's not ready to be shown to others can cause uneasiness in you and could make you feel insecure about working at home. As I have lived with my parents up to my late 20s, I've struggled a lot with this. Because premature judgment, even when it's good or light-hearted, can define your work in a way that you're not ready to receive, because your work isn't strong enough to stand up to those critics or those judgments, even when they're positive, because they're not your opinion on the work, and the artist's opinion on their work in progress should be the only thing that matters. The work shouldn't be judged or looked by others before the author says it's ready for it. Because others' influence takes the work away from what is your purpose, your real goal of expression in that specific artwork. This doesn't just happen when you're working at home and live with others, but also when you share an art studio with other artists. And I should say that as I've lived both experiences, the judgment of other artists could influence you even more than the one of the people you live with. So if you can't afford an art studio where you can work by yourself in solitude, what you can do is using dialogue to set boundaries. People who are not artists or creatives can underestimate the value that their words, their premature judgment could have on your creative process. So be kind and try to explain what that means to you and the fact that the need to not receiving any judgment or any uh, impressions by others on your work until it's ready to be shown it's not a tantrum, but it's an actual need that you have as an artist to be concentrated and to create something that's really intimate and yours. So once I'm done painting, it's time for me to clean up everything. So I use a palette knife to remove the fresh oil paint from the palette and I collect it on a paper cloth. I try to remove as much paint as possible, otherwise it's gonna dry and it's gonna be very hard to be removed. As you can see, most of my palette is full of dried paints. One day I'll clean it properly, but that day is not today. This is the best I could do for now. Next I'm going to close all my oil jars and oil paint tubes carefully, otherwise they're gonna dry. And then I select those paint brushes that I have used and that have to be cleaned. Afterwards, I hang my painting carefully and leave it on a wall where it can sit and rest and dry for a few days, as long as it needs. Then it's time to tidy up everything, so I fold my easel, take off my smock that I usually hang on the easel and then put them back together in their little corner. Then I put everything back at their place, my brushes, my safflower oil jar, the paper cloth, my paint tubes and the painting palette and then when everything's back at their place it's time for me to clean up my brushes. I'm gonna use this ecological solvent 
that doesn't have a bad odor and is not toxic and it can be used as a painting medium or as a brush cleaning solvent. This is called Eco Diluente Tintorsetto by Tintoretto. I don't know if they sell it in your country, but if I can find one on Amazon, I'll leave you the affiliate link down below in the description. So what I do is trying to remove all of the excess oil paint on the paper cloth and then I dip the paintbrush in the solvent and do the same process again and again, trying to remove as much paint as possible without damaging the brush. Next I use some Marseille soap to clean off the remainings of the paint. You could also use a specific soap for brushes, but I find that Marcel soap is one of the strongest and most efficient soaps to remove oil paint. I repeat this process up until the foam is completely transparent. And then I do the same thing over and over again with every single brush I've used. Sometimes the solvent is enough to remove all the paint from the brush, but when I've used a lot of paint, Marcel soap turns out more efficient for me. It takes time and care to clean up your brushes, but it's so important to preserve them in a good condition because the shape that the brush takes influences your painting process a lot. Do you know other ways to clean up your brushes in a more efficient way? Or how do you use to clean up your brushes? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to find out a way that's less time consuming than mine. So once your brushes are cleaned, don't forget to clean your hands as well and to dispose your solvents correctly. And we're done! Here is the final result of my portrait of Queen Elizabeth II. And if you're wondering why I painted the Queen, it's because it was a commission from an Italian girl that has nothing to do with the English crown and it was painted before the passing of the Queen. It's a quirky commission, I know, but it's not the weirdest I've received. If you would like to commission a painting, you can write me to this email, I'll leave it also down below in the description, stating commission and then the subject, your budget, the timing, I'll try to reply as soon as I can. So I hope this video was helpful for you, please let me know in the comments down below what you think of my reflections and if you have any other tips to work and paint at home, please leave them in the comments so that everyone can see them and take inspiration from your experience. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a like and also to subscribe to my channel to find new videos about painting and drawing every single week. So that's it for this video, I hope to see you next time, bye!